Hello, I'm Joan Manson of Manson Fine Art. I thank you for joining me today. I'll be sharing with you a demonstration in Pan Pastel on black Stonehenge watercolor paper, a portrait of a European robin. They're a little different than ours, a little smaller. This one is from winter, so his feathers are a little fluffier than usual. I really enjoyed the project. It only took about 38 minutes to complete. And this is a complete demonstration. There are no time lapse involved, um, or time lapses involved. Thank you. If you're interested in seeing any of my other work, uh, my web address is on the last frame, so this video, but it's mansonfineart.xyz. And yes, it is XYZ. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this demonstration. This is the robin that I'll be drawing today. I downloaded it from Wildlife Reference Photos. These are the old Yosing cosmetic brushes. They have a permanent dye on the tip to match foundations. And the whole purpose in doing this demonstration was to share my experimenting with these brushes as opposed to using sponge applicators that I normally use. I'm applying a small amount of the colorless blender and drawing out my image and I'm using the smallest of the brushes. It tends to drop a lot of powder on the page and I'll be blowing off extra excess powder throughout this demonstration. When I am drawing it into the paper, it does take, but it does bring the excess paper along with it. I tap it off before I apply it, but still there's a lot of loose powder, not quite the same way that the application of, with a sponge applicator works. But it is a stronger application or a better application than using uh, watercolor brushes, besides water. And again, I apply this, I apply the colorless blender first because it helps, as far as I'm concerned, to bring the color onto the paper more easily. Yes, the robin has no feet. It's just floating over a branch. I just chose to do the feet, the legs and the claws last. And I'm just estimating. I have done no drawing. I'm doing all of my drawing with the brush, uh, just as I might do with acrylic paints. All I have to do is wipe that brush off on a piece of paper towel and it comes right off. It's very easy to clean the brushes. There I am tapping the excess off and I'm bringing in one of the okras. Is it the amber? Just dragging it along the side find when I drag it along the side, it leaves a little more powder than when I pull it down widthwise. And now I'm using the umber shade. 
the um, pan pastels come with the main color, a tint which has white added to it, and a shade which has black added to it. And so if you don't have the shade of a color, you can add a little bit of the black to the actual color and create your own shade. It is easy, as I demonstrated in my last video, to blend pan pastels either on separate paper or on um, in the pans themselves. I'm erasing out the spot where the beak rests. I'll work on drawing it in later, but I wanted to take out the area of the face that has the beak. If I build up too much pastel, it'll, it'll just be a little bit more difficult to erase the excess away and get a pure black. And now there's the eye. See, it already looks like a robin. I used to draw my image on the paper uh, with a white pencil when I used black or with a gray pencil when I used white paper. I used to. And if it was something same size, I would frequently trace onto a white transfer or a gray transfer paper, depending upon the paper I was using. But I find with the pen pastels, I can block in the areas and create my image very quickly and very easily. And it may not be exact. Certainly this is a little bit smaller, a little less chubby than the actual reference photo. This is, um, I know it's very pale, but this is the yellow okra tint, very light. This is yellow ochre where the white has been added to it. But I'll adjust that as we go. What I did like about the brushes um, is, is that you can create a lovely fluffiness that you can't quite get with the sponge. You have a nice soft application regardless of what applier you're using but it's a little bit fluffier so when you're doing soft feathers it's very nice to use And I'm bringing in the red and orange, red and yellow to make orange. I just dip them back and forth, and if I don't like the color, I'll add more. And I'm covering up the eye, but I'll uncover it again with my eraser. This is just something that's bound to happen. The only way you'll ever have a real control over that is if you're coloring with colored pencils. And while that's interesting, it's very, and the work is beautiful, absolutely. The work that's done with colored pencils is beautiful, but I find it very hard on my hands and it takes a very long time. It, to do this in colored pencils would have taken me at least four times as long. And time is very important to me not because I'm in a rush, but because I do have arthritis and my hands get very tired very quickly from having to grasp the utensils, the tools of drawing and painting. So I find it much easier to work with something that gives me a quicker result because I just can't stop. I have to create, it's in my blood. I have to draw at the very least.
I've given up painting for the most part. I do still paint in acrylic and I still teach painting in acrylic. But I'm finding that working with pastels again is, and working in particular with the pan pastels, is very re rewarding. I have the soft pastels and I have the new pastels and they all have their special rewards of use. But I find that I'm liking the pan pastels and their application even more than I did when I originally tried them. I'm not that I know of going to own all 80 colors. I don't need that many. And I don't have enough room to keep them out all at one time like a lot of very fortunate artists do. I have to pack everything away and then bring it out as I use it because my work area is small. I've just added a little bit of um, a sienna. To darken that area and I'm erasing away the excess powder that falls onto the black paper. I have those applicators on the side just in case I decide I'm, I, I need to use them. And when that is would probably be when I decide I'm adding background color. Just using the eraser to draw up feathers on the edge of the bird. And I keep sweeping away with my fingers, which is a very bad thing to do. I'm better off blowing the dust away or using my mop brush to brush it away. What happens is that when I brush it away with my fingers, my, the oil from my fingers can get on the paper and make it difficult for the pastels to hold. Okay. I'm working in the pad. I don't have the paper out and taped down. If I did, then I wouldn't have to hold on to it and keep it from moving away. Then I'm just brushing away excess crumbs from the erasures. Little yellow, that's the yellow tint. I'm adding a little yellow. That's um, the diary light yellow shade actually. And I'm mixing that with the yellow tint, yellow ochre tint, so that I can great, add greater color to those feathers. The tint was just a little too light. And when you're layering um, the pan pastels, it will bring up the color beneath it. But this is especially more evident when you're putting lighter colors on top of darker colors. So when you're adding tints to shades, the, sh the, the shades will come through. If you're adding tints to the solid color, the solid color will come through as well. but the feathers really are fluffy from the use of these little brushes. And now I'm adding white to the belly. Just brushing it in. You can, see, you can probably see the pastel powder puffing up on the page. And I'm trying to leave it loose. I don't want it to be very hard. I, I want it soft and loose. Now, if I were doing the height of a crocodile, I'd want it to be hard. 
Um, but with a soft, fluffy bird, I want it to be fluffy and soft. And I'm just dragging down some pieces with that smaller brush. And I am using just three small brushes, and one of them I only use a couple of times. Still erasing again. Bringing up the indication of feathers. Using my fingers like I shouldn't to brush away the pastel powder. Do as I say, not as I do. Now I'm using the shade, the ochre shade, to darken in the tree branch. And when you brush it in, with the wide side of the brush, it will it does lay better on the paper, and it does blend in well into the paper. Still, not quite as well or as deeply as the sponge applicator does. And now I'm using a green tint to add a bit of moss to that branch. And highlighting it with the yellow ochre tint. In the past, and perhaps I'll do it again, but in the past what I've done as I'm working is stop filming to take pictures of the various stages of my drawing. I haven't been doing that. i just drawing straight through and thoroughly enjoying it and not caring to pay attention to what stage I'm at. But it probably would have been helpful so that I could show the various stages as it, as it grew. But uh, I prefer doing it this way, so I don't think I'll be doing photos in stages anymore. Perhaps if I'm working on a very long project. Uh, this paper is 9 by 12. And again, it is Stonehenge watercolor paper, which I found personally did not work for watercolor. It might work well for gouache. It works for colored pencils. And it works for charcoal, white charcoal. Um, and it works very nicely for the pastels. It has a little bit more tooth than the B black paper and then the than the art gram. Um, about the same as the pastel paper. But it because it's a watercolor paper, it's a little bit heavier. Which means you can erase more frequently. And because of the tooth, you can apply more layers. I'm going to use the black pencil, the charcoal pencil. And we will enlarge the eye. There we go. And I'm going to lay in the beak. You can't see it, but I can as I'm looking at the paper. This black charcoal is darker. If you look very closely, you can see it. It is darker than the paper. And now I'm adding highlight with a pastel pencil. This is from Karen Dash. I have a collection of at least a half a dozen different 
white pencils, pastel and colored pencils from a variety of companies. And I use them all in highlighting. Some work better in certain instances than others. And I've used them all for doing white drawings on black paper. Now I'm going to pick out some colors from the Faber-Castell Pit pencils. I only have a 12 pencil set. It's all that I feel I need. And I'm adding um, the brown to the beak. And now I'm adding a touch of orange to the beak. I only used the three, three, three colors, the brown, the orange, and the yellow. I had a charcoal pencil, so I didn't use to use their black. And I have a white charcoal pencil and the Caran d'Ache pencil, so I didn't use to use the white, although I certainly could have. And then back with the brown again. And a little highlight. This is a tiny round applicator, and I'm just using it to, to dab on the pastel pencil and blend it a little bit. I think that's pretty much the only time I really used it. And we're erasing away excess pastel. Most of that is powder. As I said, there's more powder generated from these brushes than there is from the soft applicator. And now we're going to add legs and claws. I'm using the white charcoal pencil to do this. I'm adding in the highlights. I may be adding extra toes. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> we can't see the rear toes because the branch is too thick and they don't wrap all the way around. Trying to figure out what my next project is, and I had thought I would do a red fox or a couple of red foxes. I recently took some photos, actually, two days ago, or oh, one day ago, of some sandhill cranes locally. And I'm thinking about doing a, a um, composition.
rather than a single portrait. I'm just blending with a thin blending stump and adding shading to the claws. I use a black charcoal pencil to create shade on the branches and around the claws. and then blending in with the stump. I'm just going back and forth with the light and the medium and the dark to create the illusion of claws on the branch and adding a little highlight to the branch. And more blending. I find these blending stumps come in very handy and they're well worth the money. You can just rub off the excess color onto paper towels. It'll still be there. So when you're using it with other items, you want to use it with things that are darker or, or similar in shade. And I have probably 20 of them that I haven't touched yet. And you can um, use sandpaper to sand down and bring up the next level, but I find that that leaves a lot of flaky paper, so I don't do that. And here she is again with the eraser. And the mop brush. The mop brush is so handy. You can also use a cosmetic brush for this, a longer handled one, not the ones that I, not the Yosing, but the ones that come with your blusher case. And now I'm going to work on the background. I'm mixing the blue with the white, and I'm going to try to carefully lay in a background. And I realized while I was doing this that what I really want to do is lay in the background first and do less of it. 
I ended up putting more background color in than I really wanted to. Well, I can imagine though that you could make some very nice fluffy fluffy clouds with these. I'll have to try that one day. And the light blue is a nice contrast. It helps to make the robin pop out because of the orange um, breast feathers and face. I believe what I decided in the end, and I still feel that way the next day, is that I will continue to use these brushes, but I'll use them in conjunction with the soft applicator. Um, feel free to turn your canvas around or your paper around when you're working on it so you can get a better angle. There's no reason not to unless the paper is that huge. But I believe that I will use both of them. I'll use them together. Not always, but certainly frequently, especially if I want to get up that fluffiness that I've got on the feathers of the bird. But in applying the background and in applying the branch, I would prefer to use the soft pastels, the soft applicators. And that is S-O-F, F as in Frank T, spelled with two Fs. So if you're looking for it, Although if you look up pan pastel apl um, applicators, you'll they'll show up for you on Amazon and, and Jerry's Artorama and Dick Blick. At the very least, they'll show up as items that you might want to purchase as well along with the pan pastels. And when I'm finished with this, I don't show it on the video, but I apply a, a, a fixative, a pastel fixative that is produced by Sennelier. And that runs, I think, about $14 for the can. And this set of 10 brushes um, was $14.98. I purchased it through Amazon. You can purchase them in other locations. I'm not sure if the other art supply stores carry them. It's sort of hard to know. I happen to see a pastel artist demonstrating these brushes and I thought I would try them. And I'm glad that I did. That spot was a little too white so I was just covering it up a bit. And I didn't end up using those sponge applicators on the background, so. Get a little of that excess powder out, erase away the extras, make it a cleaner image.
Here I'm staring at it, trying to decide if I need to do anything else. Any last minute touches. And yes, indeed, I'm going to do some extra touches, adding some white marks to create the image of the feathers because I have made a, a hard edge there with the dark of the paper underneath. And then I take paper, pencils from the pastel pencils um, using the, the yellow. I'll use the orange, I'll use a little bit of the browns. It's just hair, hair light touches. And I'm going to erase a little bit more and create hairs and shadow with my eraser. And I have to tell you that this mono pencil eraser is really a wonderful tool. It does come with two refills. You can buy more refills. I have two pens, um, and I really bought the second set of pens because in, in the event that I, I lose the first, I'll have it. And it came with two refills, so I've just, after a year of using these, finally gotten into my third refill. And a little bit of orange. And then I'll blend that down because I don't want it to be as stark as it is. Okay, I believe my piece is complete now. And let's do a comparison. As you can see, the robin on the left is a little chunkier than the robin on the right, but still, it's very obviously the European robin. I had a great deal of fun doing this. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time.